meditation follows a series of patterns. And by understanding those patterns, I can give you a more clear path to finding out how to navigate change and how to find the big idea. I'm on a mission to help people find better ideas faster. And the real reason why is that I spent my whole life trying to find my own entrepreneurial idea. And ever since I was a little kid, all I wanted to do was be an entrepreneur, but my little you know, teenage businesses weren't good enough. So after school, I went into consulting, I studied innovation, did the MBA CFA type stuff just to learn how to find my idea better. I ended up running an idea pipeline for a bank. It grew to a billion dollar business and all that sounds great, but imagine telling your 12 year old self, you grew up to be a banker. So I started a, a website in the wee hours of the morning where people from around the world could come to share their business ideas, whether it was fashion, tech, design, culture, architecture, whatever it might be. And I hope some trend hunter in South America or a trend hunter in Europe would submit an idea that could inspire my own. But fast forward in time and there were a ton of us diving into this. So we've had a couple billion page views from 100 million people. And if you thought of that as research, this is the biggest innovation research that's really you know, happened. And so um, we've started diving deeper into the patterns of opportunity and what could be more of a pathway that you could use to filter through chaos, find your next idea, and ultimately learn how to reinvent in these times of change. People don't realize it, but here we are experiencing history's highest rate of change, and yet uh, we don't learn about chaos in schools. We are actually um, approaching the world with a brain that's evolved from 10,000 years of evolution. And all of this leads to a series of traps, traps that block successful people in particular from adapting. I like to say that 10,000 years of evolution as farmers means that we farm our opportunity. And once you find what you're successful at, your career, your occupation, your go-to way to run a project, then you repeat and optimize whatever led to last year's harvest and that's helped us you know feed ourselves for 10,000 years but actually in a time period of change there are a lot of pitfalls to that and I can show you dozens and dozens of companies that failed to adapt for that very reason. Kodak invented the digital camera in 1975. By the 90s they put out a website where you could share pictures of your face uh, with your friends but let's get out of that business. Smith Corona invented grammar checkers, spell checkers, the laptop word processor. They spent a year selling computers and decided no let's focus on what we're good at. Let's be the best typewriter company in the world. Blockbuster Video was a pioneer in online video streaming. They had three chances to buy Netflix for $50 million, but they didn't. Uh, and, you know, obviously we know where they've gone. And I can go through so many more examples where you start to see that successful people and teams are victim to three traps. The traps are that we become complacent. We lose that hunger we had when we were first out of school. We become repetitive. We do what happened before instead of trying something new. And we become very protective of our ideas. We assume we're correct. We create fortunes. We attribute our fortune to that idea. And we're not really as open to whatever the next generation or the next customer has to say. So in Better and Faster, what I've been really diving into are how do you combat those traps? And what are the actual patterns of opportunity that we've learned from studying so many ideas? Uh, at Trend Hunter. You have a lot of reasons that people become more complacent, protective, and repetitive. But the next generation of engineers of responses to the RFPs are becoming a lot more integrated. I gave an example today of PCL where uh, my uncle-in-law Dean at, at, at Dean Sharub at, at PCL uh, has been talking about the new hospitals that are being built which are all technologically integrated and that RFP is no longer just for a building, it's actually to create patient care at a much different level. And I think that the question you need to ask yourself is what exactly is it that you're trying to do? Are you building a building? Are you paving a road? Or are you solving a different need? And the more that you push yourself, there are critical questions that you can ask that would lead you to better understand how your construction business could evolve. The other huge trend that's going to be impacting construction is the generational shift as we go and shift the power of control from boomers to millennials. Millennials aren't motivated by money. They're not motivated by putting in a career of decades of effort into one company. They're motivated by completing, by feeling a sense of belonging, by feeling as if they're in charge and running their own projects. This is something that scares off a lot of the you know, engineering and more traditional companies that I've worked with. But the other way to think about it is the attributes of a millennial are very similar to the attributes of an entrepreneur. So by re-engineering how you motivate that new group, you can actually benefit from uh, a group of hungry minds that wants to help you adapt.
I've got all sorts of extras for this conference at trendhunter.com slash secret slash construction. And I'll take you to some of the free reports, research, and some videos of what we talked about today.